everybody. Happy Saturday. I thought I would do something which I never ever do, which is I'm going to attempt to do sort of a weekend reading life whatever vlog. So <laughs> um, it's a long weekend for some people. It is not technically for me, but I took it as a long weekend. So I'm out and about, obviously. It's like 11 on Saturday. So I did a bunch of chores and like cleaning around the house trying to get that stuff out of the way first. And now I am out in the errands, errands, part of my day. So by errands, I mean, I am in a long-term plan. I need a new couch. My couch is smushy and not comfortable and does no favors for my bad back. But I've been on the market for a couch for quite a bit. And I used to have this amazing L-shaped sectional. Like years ago, I had it for like 15 years. That thing like did not die. But when I moved many years ago out of the city, um, I needed to put it to rest. So I did. But I am back still craving a sectional. So I'm just going to go window shopping now. I'm trying to see if I can... There's a couch that I'm interested in from West Elm. They don't have the style I want, but they have like a whole line of stuff in the style. I want to say it's called the Andes line. So they have one of the couches in the store. So I'm just going to go sit on it, take a look at some fabrics. Again, long-term project planning, but I just kind of wanted to do something fun. And then there happens to be a Barnes & Noble in the shopping center. And I happen to have a coupon. So I might, well, I'm definitely going to take a browse around. I might buy something. We'll see what happens. And yeah, kind of take it from there. A lot of stores in the shopping center have gone away. So there's not too, too much to see here. There is a Starbucks. So I might, I don't know, maybe I'll just like grab like a lemonade or a drink or something like that too. Who knows? But it's Saturday. Again, it's so crummy out. The sun came out for, I think, 3.2 seconds. It's supposed to be cloudy and rainy all weekend, but it's okay. So I just figured I would get out and about, do the thing. And I'll let you guys come along for the journey? I don't know. We'll see. This is <laughs> such new territory for me. I'm terrible at this. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to head out and I will let you guys know how the trip goes. Hey guys, okay, I'm home. Horn. Oh, it's like cool out, but I'm warm, but it's all good. Um, so I definitely um, had a super productive trip, which was great. I got myself a coffee. I have not been in a Starbucks, you guys, in forever. Um, I got some fabric samples for my couch. So I talked to a lovely lady there who is going to help me when the time comes but there were actually two different couches. So I actually saw the couch I want, which they said they didn't have on display, but they totally had the sectional on display, which was great. And then I saw another sectional that I also like. So I'm gonna do a little online research. And again, it's not, it's not a now thing, but I'm just trying to find something to distract me. And furniture and design is always fun. So this is the couch that's gotta go. It looks fine on the surface. It's just so, soft and it's become softer and softer not in a good way to the point that like you sink and every time I sit on it to watch tv my back hurts afterwards so it's basically just taking a valuable real estate right now so anyway fun adventure saw tons of stuff of course that I wanted at West Elm don't you always but it was fun I have not been in a furniture store I haven't been in like a non-essential store basically like just browsed somewhere for fun since the pandemic. So that was fun. I did get into a little bit of trouble at Barnes and Noble, but I had a coupon 
and then it was a buy one get one and it's my birthday month so <laughs> treating myself it's the judgment free zone friends right okay and then i also maybe stop by the wine store because that's there too it's a really good shopping center i don't know why i was like poo-pooing it before but this is my favorite this is bogle essential red if you guys like red blend wine 13 dollars. this is from california this is not like taste cheap kind of a wine this tastes like it should be like a 40 dollar bottle of wine in my opinion i discovered this at a restaurant in town seven years ago six years ago when i moved here got a glass of it immediately went online to find out what it was and died at the time this was like a 9.99 like bottle of wine a couple years ago it's up to 13. so if you're wine people there's my psa on wine and then i got some books so i had a short list of what i want there's so many new hardbacks and all of that good stuff that I want, but I just, I'm trying not to, again, unless it's an auto buy author that I know I'm gonna love and read right away, I'm trying not to buy the brand new hardcovers immediately. And I'm also trying to read some of those through my library to see if I love them. And then if I do add them to my, add to my library list. So like I just did that with Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Kurian. I listened to that through my library, I loved it. It's not to sidebar, but we are. That's gonna be one of those books where it's not gonna be for everyone. It's unlikable characters, doing dark and messed up things, dark and messed up people, you know the drill. Um, the drill. But I really loved it. And I somebody had commented on one of my videos that they quit on the book, but maybe the audio would be better. I can only speak from my audio perspective. The audio book was really good. And I did feel like like the narrator was good, the story kept moving, like it definitely kept me hooked. So maybe audio was the way to go, but I definitely put that on my, add to my physical library list when the time comes. I don't need it immediately. And then I'm trying to think what the other one I had my eye on. Oh, I was, I was gonna be, I was going to be tempted by How to Kill Your Best Friend by Lexi Elliott and they didn't have it, which I don't know, that came out like last month. And I'm pretty sure it was there last time I went to Barnes and Noble and I was like, no, no, no. But then the more time I've had away from it, the more I wanted to get it and they didn't have it. So Divine Intervention. So one of the books that was on my list, which I'm actually gonna film a thrift book haul. So I tried two online used books place, used book places. So I tried thrift books and I tried, they're literally right here under the table. I feel like it's not gonna say where it came from. I tried another one. But one of the books that I got was Endless Night by Agatha Christie, and I knew it was old. It's, I think it said it was in good condition. I think I paid $2. My expectations were really low. It was really bad. Like, it's one of those books that smells like it's from 40 years ago, and it was kind of falling apart a little bit. So, shame on me. I mean, if it's, uh, I'm gonna take a deeper look at it and if I can donate it to my free little library, I'll do that. But anyway, so I bought, I should have just done this in the first place. I bought the actual book. So this I feel like is one of her lesser known or lesser talked about books. It's not part of either series. It was early in her writing career, but I was listening to an Agatha Christie podcast and they were talking about it and I got super interested in it. So this is Some Are Born to Sweet Delight, Some Are Born to Endless Night. So we have penniless Michael Rogers discovers the beautiful house at Gypsy's Acre and meets the heiress Ellie. It seems all his dreams have come true at once, but he ignores an old woman's warnings of an ancient curse and evil begins to stir in paradise. As Michael soon learns, Gypsy's Acre is the place where fatal accidents happen. So I'm very intrigued by this one and I'm excited to read. I haven't read an Agatha Christie in a while, I wanna say. So I got that and then of course I meandered all over the store and I picked up so many different, like maybe I was gonna get The Shining, I was looking in the horror section because it's that time of year, but like nothing was totally clicking or it was something that I'd heard like little to nothing about or maybe heard some so-so things about even though I was curious about it. I just didn't feel like anything I wanted to take a risk on and then I saw two books on the half off table and I decided to take a risk on them. So. First one, I'm just pulling the half off sticker. And I feel like I've heard about this, but didn't really hear a lot about it, is We Are All the Same in the Dark. And this is by Julie Haberlin. 
And of course, I don't know if you guys do this. I like pulled out my phone and I was Googling reviews on it while I was standing there. <laughs> so this is supposed to be like really dark. And this is Mysteries in the Past, Mysteries in the Present. And it's like bloody handprint, left behind. So I don't know, I'll read a little bit more about it and tell you guys about it. I don't know too much about it just yet. And then the other one I got, which I know I shouldn't, but you know, I did it, is When She Was Good by Michael Robotham. So this is part of a series. I have Good Girl, Bad Girl. I haven't read it yet, but I've heard really good things about it. And some of you guys have asked if I have read this or if I've read this series. So you won a whole bunch of awards, crime writer. So this is, again, it's part of a series and it's a forensic psychologist you know embroiled on an explosive murder case with disturbing long cloaked origins i mean disturbing dark sure so i don't want to read too much about the back in case it spoils something from the first book but i wound up picking it up there were only so many choices on the buy one get one table and i had read a lot of them and the rest of them there was another one called the chill by scott Cohen maybe Scott Carson and Stephen King plugged it on the front and I feel like he has a new book coming out I hadn't heard of him before but I'm pretty sure he has a new book coming out which is why his name popped to me and I googled and read a bunch of reviews and they were not great so I wound up not getting that one there you have it but it is now 11:39. I was out for a long time you guys which was good but I'm starving so I'm going to drink my cappuccino while I make some lunch I'm gonna read my book. I'm still reading My Sweet Girl, which I'm loving. It's been, it's been a week, you guys. I feel like I keep saying this, but like, there's just a lot going on. But I basically, what I'm saying is I have not had a lot of time to read this week as far as sitting down and reading a book. So I'm gonna dive back into that. I'm a little bit more than halfway through, really enjoying it. It's definitely dark. She's definitely gonna be one of those characters also. Not gonna be for everyone, but she's totally for me. But while I was doing my chores this morning, I don't know if I told you guys this this morning, and when I say chores, I feel like I sound like an eight-year-old, but when I was cleaning, I finished listening to Darling by Kay Ankrum. I, I have mixed feelings. I'm trying to sit with it for a little bit. It's a Peter Pan inspired, it's not a retelling, but it's inspired by, and you guys know I listen to Peter Pan. I have Lost in the Neverwoods, which I want to read. And then I knew this book, Darling, had come out and I got it from my library on audio. And I thought, well, this will be fun. I'll just like do a whole bunch of Peter Pan things. I, did, I didn't love it. I feel like it's one of those books that could like ruin Peter Pan for you and not in a way of like spoiling Peter Pan for you, but like just ruining what feels like a sacred story. And I really hope Lost in the Neverwoods doesn't do that. I don't think it's supposed to. And I've seen a couple mixed things on Darling, but it definitely, it definitely went in a direction I didn't love, but I also understand sort of like a broader commentary that the book is bringing to the table. But anyway, I need to gather my thoughts more on that one too. But all right, I need to eat because I'm gonna start getting hangry and that's not gonna be fun for anybody. So I will talk to you guys in a bit. guys it's like 26 i decided that even though i have a video good to go for tomorrow because it's saturday and i am always sort of trying to post videos on sunday sunday is trying to be like my day at the very least sunday and thursday I'm trying uh, i decided i would rather post a different video for tomorrow so i'm gonna do like some editing we're gonna get that up and we're gonna do that that is my game plan but in the meantime that whole thing where I was like, oh, I went to Barnes & Noble and I got some books and blah, 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 blah. Well, I came home to a package, to unexpected book mail. Thank you, Lindsay. So it's Lisa Jules and Night She Disappeared, which is one of my most favorite anticipated books. <laughs> one of my most anticipated books. You guys know I talk about Lisa Jewell a ton and how much I love her. And Lindsay so sweetly sent me this for my birthday, which is so cool. And yeah, I'm totally down for her buddy reading this together. So this is Mystery in the Past, a Mystery in the Present. Somebody goes missing. Beautiful summer night. I talked about this September, I want to say this came out. August, September. 
I feel like I talked about it in the summer when it came out in the UK. Anyway, she can do no wrong. And I also feel like Lindsay can do no wrong. But yeah, <laughs> Lisa Jewel can do no wrong. So I'm so excited. Book mail, you don't even know what's coming. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do some video editing and then, I don't know, I think I'm gonna watch some Nancy Drew tonight. I'm totally obsessed with that show and the new season premiere of last night, which I didn't even know was happening. So I think I'm gonna watch the end of season two and then watch the first new episode because it ended a while ago and I don't totally remember what happened. But yeah, I love that show. So that's my super exciting Saturday night, which honestly is super exciting to me. So that's what we're gonna do. But I did read a little bit while I was eating. I feel like nobody wants to watch me eat, but I am, I already told you guys this. Yeah, I'm into My Sweet Girl and I'm enjoying it. It's so like, I don't know what's going on kind of a book. And it's another like mystery in the past, mystery in the present. And I feel like it's so far, like it's one of those, like I feel like in a Riley Sager kind of way, I feel like it dances the line between Thriller and Supernatural and I'm not sure what's happening. So I don't know, we'll see, I'll keep you guys posted, but I am loving it so far. And I watched, um, totally unrelated, but I watched a YouTube video, I'll link it down below in case you guys are interested, with Hank Philippi Ryan interviewing Vera Kurian for Pub Day for Never Saw Me Coming. So this is a couple weeks ago the interview actually happened, but I just listened to it, watched it, because um, I finished the book. And for any writers out there, I haven't dug deep yet, but I guess on her website, she has a blog and talks a lot about her writing process and everything. So very interested, but I loved this book. It was, even though there's no spoilers, there's no spoilers in the link down below. It was really interesting to hear them talk about the book and ha having read it, I feel like I obviously got a little bit more out of it because they do talk around some situations, but I also feel like I appreciate it more hearing them talk about it. And I talked about this, I don't even know if I talked about it in a video yet or if I just told my friends this thing, but this was one of those books where it's like, as soon as I, finished it, listening to it, I 100% was like, okay, I want to read it again because it's one of those books I know I'm going to get more and more out of, but I just loved it so much. So anyway, I already talked about the book, but I need to get to my video for YouTube so you guys have something to see tomorrow. So yeah, but we're doing that.
Good morning guys, happy Monday. I'm obviously out taking a walk. It's, um, I don't know, like 7.30ish, I think. I woke up at 5.15. I don't know why that always happens when there's a day off, but it seems to happen when there's a day off. But uh, the upside is I finished my book, so that was good. And I decided to just get up and out before breakfast like I would normally do on a work day. So it's beautiful out today. This is one of my favorite areas to walk in the neighborhood. But yeah, so I have today off and I'm just excited to maybe be a bit more productive than I was yesterday. So I would like to film today but also read, but I have a lot of cleaning I should do. It's like all the things I wanna do, but hopefully the day stays like this and can just kind of like hang on the porch and read for a bit too. So we'll see where the day takes me. But for now, cannot complain because it's beautiful compared to the last couple days, which have been rainy and crappy. Let me see if I can not blind you guys. So it's like beautiful sunrise time. I just love it. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I obsessively will post pictures in the morning of sunrises and just like all things clouds, sky, surroundings, you name it. I'm posting pictures of it. I am interrupting my filming because I realized I did not check in again today after my morning walk. So I'm filming a couple of videos. I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of my game here. I'm also realizing that I am out of frame here. So anyway, I had a really good walk this morning. I just sort of enjoyed like a leisurely breakfast and stuff when I got home. So book updates. That's why you're here. Hold on. Okay, so I finished My Sweet Girl this morning before I even got out of bed, <laughs> which is kind of my favorite way to finish a book. And I loved this book. I am still processing it, thinking about it. I almost knocked over something here. But this was, I feel like in a similar vein to Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Kurian, which I haven't talked about yet because I finished it the other day. This is not going to be for everyone, but this is so for me because we have a somewhat unlikable main character and it's dark and it's twisty and it's mysteries in the past and mysteries in the present. So the premise of this book is our main character Paloma is being blackmailed by her roommate and this is like opening pages, opening chapter, inside flap kind of stuff. And it's a sidebar. I am trying I listen to a lot of podcasts, you guys know, author interviews, interviews on YouTube, like Murder by the Book and Mighty Blaze. Like there's so many great ones if you're into the author side of things and you're interested in learning more about the books. But I try to keep now my description of the book to what the author says as their elevator pitch. So that way I'm on that line of telling you enough to hopefully intrigue you guys or like convey what the story's about, but not giving away too much because my least favorite thing in the world is when people spoil a book for you, even if it's accidental, and I don't want to be that girl. So, Paloma is being blackmailed by her roommate. And when she comes home, she finds him dead at the kitchen table. And when the police show up, the body is gone. There's kind of no evidence that he even existed. And she is convinced that what is happening in the present day is connected to her childhood. And she was at an orphanage in Sri Lanka. This is 18 years after she came to the US and we get multiple timelines, just twisty, dark, incredible. It's a debut novel. I love it, I love it, I love it. So good, so I finished that this morning. And then while I was on my walk, I'm in a, I'm listening to audiobooks if it works for me right now kind of a thing. So I was originally starting to listen to Sawkill Girls, but 
listening to that, but also trying to read My Sweet Girl. It was, it, I have a very hard time listening to multiple thrillers or like balancing two thrillers at the same time. So I wound up hitting pause on that. I think I only was like 5% in maybe, but I have the book book of it also. I'm looking at it over there. So I plan on reading that this month. But I wound up listening to Last Night at the Viper Room, which is about the life and death of River Phoenix. So I was a River Phoenix fan as a kid. Like I loved Stand By Me. I loved A Night in the Life of Jimmy Reardon. I remember seeing my own Private Idaho. I haven't seen it in forever. I definitely feel like probably stuff went over my head with that. But I'm listening, or I finished listening to it this morning actually. I don't know if it's eight hours or something. It's not a long audiobook. I started it yesterday. And that's one of those books that's like interesting, but heartbreaking and such an interesting commentary on the time. So what I liked about the book is they talk about, so River Phoenix's entire life, he was 23 when he died, his entire life, unbelievable. And you see sort of not just the actors and actresses that he came up with, but also who was at the Viper Room that night. So they constantly sort of check in with the different actors and actresses. So you've got like Martha Plimpton and Samantha Mathis and obviously his brother, Joaquin, who was there that night. Just a lot of Ethan Hawke, Johnny Depp, who owned like part owner of Pipe Viper Room, Viper Room. <laughs> but it talks about all the, the other actors who were coming up at that time and kind of, I feel like what River Phoenix's career could have been. So it's a lot about Christian Slater and Leonardo DiCaprio and Keanu Reeves. And it was just, it was very interesting. I enjoyed it. It always feels weird to say how like you enjoy books like this. It's also like all things that you know, I feel like in Hollywood how producers and directors and agents and whoever, friends, colleagues, managers, turned a blind eye to a lot of the addiction. And there was even one I don't know if it was a director or producer who was talking about working with Kiefer Sutherland who knew he had a drinking problem and it was like, but he always showed up on set fine and ready to work. So I kind of dismissed the fact that he would drink two bottles of whiskey a day and didn't bother him about it. So it's also very like sad and depressing on that side of things, but it was very interesting. So if you were a River Phoenix fan, if you were sort of an 80s, 90s, that time in the movies, it was, I'm glad I read it. I was curious about it. My one beef with it, was the narrator who was fine when he talked in his own voice but when he was like being Johnny Depp or being Keanu or Tarantino he would try and put on those voices but then he was doing other people's voices but in like his Johnny Depp so it just it was weird and then anytime he did it's a man who narrates it but anytime he did a female voice it sounded so like soft-spoken and like not assertive and shy and it just it was just a little bit weird. Like, I feel like he just could have said, Martha Plimpton said, quote, blah, 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 rather than being like, oh, and I don't really know what happened to River. It could just, I don't know, it was weird. But anyway, so I need to get back to filming my other stuff, but I wanted to check in. So I don't know what I'm gonna read next. I'm reading a nonfiction book, The War of Art, and it's about, so far, I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm like 20 pages in, but it's about basically procrastination and how you will resist doing the things that you love the most and could actually change your life for the better because of fear and how resistance plays into that. And I think it's specifically targeted because it's called The War of Art about creatives so like writers, painters, musicians, but I'm sure it can be applied regardless of what your dream or your calling is. So I'm enjoying it so far. I heard about it on Medium. I was reading an article on Medium about it and this book came out like in 2002 or something like that, but I'm enjoying it so far. But I think I might pick up Wonderland by Jennifer Hillier next. I can't decide. So anyway, I'm going to mull that, but now I'm going to film a video about a whole bunch of books I'm going to unhaul because it needs to happen, guys. Okay, I'll check in in a little bit. Hey guys, it's Monday night. I thought I would close out the vlog here because it's like 6.30. It feels like it's 10 o'clock because it's that time of year where it gets dark really early, which I'm not a fan of, but I had a productive day. 
I was doing some video editing. I filmed a bunch of videos. I had a very nice leisurely lunch. Again, it just took all the time I wanted in the world um, to have a good day today, which was great. So I read more of The War of Art today, which I'm very much enjoying. And then I think I'm gonna start Wonderland. I don't know if I'm gonna start it tonight because I know it's creepy, uh, but I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for Jennifer Hillier backlist. I'm so excited for creepy books because it's October and it's what it's all about. And yeah, I'll let you guys know, but I hope you enjoy this psychotically long vlog. And I don't know, we'll see if I ever want to do this again, but let me know what you guys think. Thank you if you've made it this far. Oh my goodness, I'm in a rocking chair and it just rocked forward. That was really like insane. Um, but yeah, let me know if you like this kind of video. Let me know if you want to see more of it. I don't know. I feel like it's like a hot mess express, but anyway, thank you for watching it. Thank you for hanging out today. Thank you for spending time with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you guys are doing great and I will talk to you really soon in another video. Bye everybody.